Senator Sass. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, thank you, Director Ray, for being here, and thank you for the way you've been available, available to us on this committee and on the Intel Committee. Uh, we've also been grateful for your work and availability. Um, we, we've talked a good bit about the intelligence failures around January 6th, but some of it is how did we sort signal from noise, and some of it is the handoff from the FBI and other entities to the Capitol Police as you do an after action, um, how much of the problem is the challenge of navigating a social media world where any drunk guy in a bar now has amplification that he can be heard around the world and lots of it is just drunk guy in a bar ranting and some of it is more particular threats because people can find communities of kind of warped belief with other people if they're planning something wicked uh, on social media. How much of it is the filtering through social media for you to make sense of it, and how much of the January 6th failure was the handoff from the FBI to Capitol Police? Well, Senator, as I said, when it comes to the handoff, uh, a lot of the attention has really been about this Norfolk uh, SIR, which I think I've, I've talked about it at some length, where we provided the information to our partners in three different ways. And as it was, the information was raw, uncorroborated information at the time, certainly. Uh, I think the other part of your question, uh, the filter, the social media piece of it, uh, is a huge issue. Uh, and it's something that uh, we and everybody in law enforcement struggles with right now. Um, uh, you know, you use the drunk guy example. I guess that sometimes I refer to it used to be that some angry, demented guy living in mom's basement, not that there's anything wrong with that, uh, you know, in one part of the country is now able to communicate with the similarly angry guy in grandma's attic in another part of the country, and they get each other spun up now. Uh, and, and how to, to separate who's being aspirational versus who's being intentional. Uh, it won't shock you to learn, uh, and hopefully not other members of the committee, that the amount of angry, hateful, unspeakable, combative, violent even, rhetoric on social media uh, exceeds what anybody in their worst imagination is out there. Uh, and so trying to figure out who's just saying, you know what we ought to do is X, or everybody ought to do X, versus the person who's doing that and actually getting traction and then getting followers. And of course, that's assuming that they're not communicating through encrypted channels about all that stuff, uh, is one of the hardest things there is to do in today's world with the nature of the violent extremism threat we face. Social media companies play a huge role in helping us with that, but you often hear us say, if you see something, say something. To me, the refinement here would be if Americans see something on social media that seems to have crossed that line, they need to say something because that's going to be our best source of information to prevent this. So it's helpful. Uh, I've heard from Nebraska law enforcement before. <clears throat> At one level, they don't really know what to do with if you see something, say something because it's not clear exactly where they hand that information. So let's talk a little bit more about the handoff between state and local law enforcement, as Senator Coons was, and the Bureau, but also between platform, technology platform con content moderation and the Bureau. But first, just inside the Bureau, give us comfort that we're getting a lot better at this, because I don't think we're giving you enough resources um, to get the right kind of new human capital you're going to need, but I'd love to be wrong. So go from three years ago to a year ago, a year ago to today, and a day to a year from now. How are we getting better at filtering signal from noise, and what kind of new human capital are you hiring that should give us confidence that we're going to get better in this world that is exploding with lots of online rant? Well, certainly, we're, there's a number of things we're trying to do to get better, and I think we are making progress, but all of it, as you uh, reference, requires resources. Um, so there's a, a data analytics piece, because the volume is so significant that we need to uh, get better at being able to analyze the data that we have to do it in a timely way, to separate the wheat from the chaff. Um, and that requires both uh, tools, analytical tools, and we've had requests for those in the budgets the last couple of years, uh, but also people, data analysts, who can devote their time to that, who have the experience. So that's part of it. I think a second part of it is, uh, as I think I referenced in response to an earlier question, all of these investigations that we do, all these arrests we make, are important not, from a, not just from a disruption perspective, but putting my intelligence hat on. Yep. They allow us to learn more about where people communicate, how they communicate, 
what the magic words are, all that kind of stuff, so we get better at better and anticipating from that reason. But uh, make no mistake, we've got a long way to go. This is uh, an incredibly hard problem. I know from communicating with my foreign counterparts, especially the Five Eyes, that they're struggling with it too. Uh, as to your point about people knowing where to go, you know, I will tell you that our tip line, our public access tip line, uh, both the email tips and the phone tips, have exploded in volume, uh, and we're doing things to kind of get that information out to state and local law enforcement much more quickly. And certainly the social media companies, some of them have gotten better at providing us uh, more real-time information when they see something, because they have a lot of resources <laughs> to devote to this problem in terms of policing their own platforms. So the more we can incentivize them to do that, that's a big part of this too. Can I concretize the example? So I'm a high school teacher or a high school principal and some kid comes to me and says, hey, these kids have always seemed to be online bullies, but now it seems like the things they're saying sound more violent. What do you tell them to do? Contact your local FBI field office. So it, it is FBI, it's not your local police department. Well, I, I think they could also contact state and local law enforcement. We all now work so closely together that I think we view a call to one as a call to us all. We're all if we get the information, we're you know, nine times out of ten going to be pushing it to state and local law enforcement as quickly as we can. We do a lot of outreach to the high schools like you're talking about, meeting with teachers, meeting with students, meeting with parents, to try to get them to understand better what to be on the lookout for, what might be that indicator. Because the one thing we know, whether it's, whether it's any kind of domestic violent extremism we've talked about here this, this morning, or frankly just the, the, the horrific active shooter, school shooter situation, is that when you look back on the path to the, to the key moment, almost every single time there was a friend, a family member, a neighbor, a classmate, a coworker, something, somebody who knew the person well enough to know this is their baseline. They've now changed in a way that's scary to me and no one knows better than the person who knows them well. And that's the person we need to come forward when they do and they're doing it more and more we're able to get in front of it. I'm, I'm basically at time, so I won't ask a question here, but I'll flag one that I want to continue talking with you about. I, I would love to hear your big national pitch for these data analysts, because we need more great human capital to serve their country in this way. Um, but I also want to be sure that our training for these data analysts um, have First Amendment sensibilities about what they're there to do. They're looking for violence. They're not looking there to be um, the national speech police. Um, so look forward to continuing that conversation. Thanks for your work. Absolutely. Thanks, Senator Sass.